Hello and welcome back to what is legally distinct from anything that you see on the Science or Discovering Networks. Today we're going to try to debunk a video from our friend Destin at Smarter Every Day. He says a spaghetti always breaks into three pieces. Should we try it ourselves? Why not? Huh! Look at that! There it goes. All right for it. Well, it looks like it's true. I wonder how common knowledge this is. Hey, Tony, did you know that pasta always breaks into three pieces? You see this? <laughs> is this amazing? Did you, did you know this? I didn't know. <laughs> so why do you think this happens, Spangs? Well, for a long time it was thought to be vibration. But Dustin disproved that by testing it underneath water in a fish tank. Dustin figured it out using a quarter million frame per second camera. So here are his results from the Smarter Every Day video. Man, we had to go way faster than I thought we would to get this answer, but there it is. I mean, it's not vibration. It's the curvature of the spaghetti as it straightens out. Think about it this way. The entire spaghetti rod is under torque, right? Because of this torque, it bends in a curve. And when a brake occurs, the side near the brake is now free from torque. But there's still this counter torque built up in the rod. So it starts to straighten itself out from left to right, rotating up and straightening out along the way. Because the spaghetti on the left is already straightened out and the spaghetti on the right is still curved, the point where they meet is now even more curved, which causes the spaghetti to bend beyond the minimum failure radius. This results in a fracture. It's like one side doesn't get the message fast enough. If the whole rod were to release at one time, it would be fine, but it doesn't. It breaks itself apart along the way. Every time you have a new break, the process starts all over again. This physical phenomenon is called a cascading fracture. That is Fascinating. Can we test it in simulation? No. Well, mere mortals may say no, but I figured out this clever workaround to get this to work in nonlinear simulation. To solve this in nonlinear simulation, first I solve the pasta strand as a beam with two joints on either side. Then I apply a custom material with a stress strain curve using test data obtained from MIT laboratories. MIT, your leader for pasta stress strain curves, apparently. Next, I put in a piece of reference geometry on one end with a curvature of three rads. The other end will be fixed, and this will represent our bending of the pasta rod. Once I run this, I can get a resultant displacement as well as how much stress is built up in the beam. If I look at my axial stress and zoom in on the end, you can see how much stress is built up in that section. About three quarters of the way from the left, there's a high stress concentration. This is likely where the beam is going to fail. Even more telling is if I take a look at the shear moment plot, I can see elements of high shear where it's likely that the pasta strand is going to break apart. This is all well and good, and it does look like a similar location to where it breaks in real life, but it doesn't help me because the beam won't be able to actually break and shatter like it does in real life inside the simulation. This is where we have to get clever. So now what I'm going to do is make a new configuration that shortens the beam to the exact location where that shear moment said it was very high and likely to shatter. This will represent the section that's left over after one side breaks. Next, I'll build up the energy using a, another piece of reference geometry of one rad. This time though, I'm gonna put in a off function one millisecond after it's reached its full deflection. Now, by using this off section, we're letting go of it very suddenly, just as if it's broken off and lost support. This is how we're gonna represent that pasta strand breaking. So now if I take a look at my axial stress, you can see as it lets go, a lot of stress is built up and it seems to wobble all around like there's a lot of energy dissipation. That's a little bit too fast, so let's slow it down. Just look at the last few frames. If I zoom in right here, you can see a very high amount of axial stress as it tries to straighten itself out, just like Destin's video showed. If I take a look at the shear moment plot one millisecond after it let go, there's shear moments in both directions all over. But if I go one millisecond before that to when it's being held, the shear is constant and smooth. So that definitely shows that it's going to break. 
Going one step above that shows breakages occurring all over. So this definitely confirms what Destin showed. Wow, that is impressive. Good thing you beamed down to Earth to show us these things. You're welcome, peasant. Join us next time when we investigate the myth on whether or not we get a cease and desist. <laughs>